Luke chapter number one. 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 We're going to read 5 through 13, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do the summary. Hopefully you've been reading it or you've read it at your leisure. Um, good to see you, Clarence. Luke chapter number one, verse five. It says, when Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children, hear this, because Elizabeth was unable to bear a child. They both were very old. One day, Zachariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zachariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the incense altar. Zachariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear, and he saw him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. This is... Um, an important passage of scripture. It, it, it has a lot of things within it, and I hope that when you are listening to this sermon this morning, at least you'll hear some points that draw inspiration for your life, but also give you information. A good sermon should not just give you an idea about the text, it should also make you feel like you should study the Bible more. And I want to hopefully do my job well enough that that's the case. Um, this series is focused on the Advent, which means the coming or the watch of the Lord. Uh, miracles have gotten to be quite difficult as they have been used to determine the existence of God, which they should not. Many have given up on the vehicle of prayer because it did not produce the favorable outcome desired. I can 100% sympathize with you and understand and agree. It can be definitely heart-wrenching and shake one's resolve to commit to a regimen of prayer when your last prayer did not produce the result that you anticipated. I would hope as we review this text, we will lock into the consistent theme of not every message is a miracle, but every miracle does have a message. Uh, today, we'll just kind of discuss the, the miracle, the, the message, and the messengers that communicated the miracle. A little theology, just so you'll indulge me. There, there are two groups of people. There, there's one called cessationists. Cessationists believe, cessationists believe this. There are cessationists and there are continuous. Cessationists believe this. The miraculous gifts of the Spirit, such as the gift of healings, tongues, and prophecy, has ceased after the apostolic age, which means after the apostles have died. Biblically defined, the gift of healing involves a human agent who by God's power miraculously delivers sick people from real diseases in a way that's undeniable and instantaneous. They believe it's just it was a sign given to the ministry of Christ for the apostles only 
to affirm the foundation of the church. Continuous believe that God still uses healing as a means to transform lives at his will and discretion. Cessationists, in my opinion, utilize the idea that God does not heal to, in my opinion, to protect themselves from the reality of God doesn't, they can say, well, he stopped years ago. I don't believe that God has stopped healing people. I am a continuous, although I believe us as continuous have put a lot of emphasis in the messengers than the actual God of healing. So we run to individuals believing they have this power to heal, not recognizing the power is in God. And I don't necessarily have to run to a crusade for a miracle. I can run to my prayer closet and receive a miracle from God. And, and, and that, that is very important that you and I distinguish if you are cessationist, because if you don't believe in miracles, it may be a challenge for you to pray me through when I need help. If you believe God has stopped healing Burbino, then that means that why go to you and ask for prayer if you don't believe in healing? So if I'm on my sick bed, I need to ask, are you a continuous? Or are you a cessationist? Because that matters. Because if you don't believe God heals, the point of you praying for me fervently will be like this. Well, God, you know, you stop healing and, and you know, I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis in it because I don't believe you do it. I, I don't need that. I don't need somebody who's been to seminary, has a master's degree in divinity. I need an old backwoods country person that has not had medicine, has not had prescription, and can believe God to do the impossible. Possible. I remember talking to my friend in Africa and I said, well, how is COVID doing for you all? He says, well, pastor, we don't have medicine like the states, so we have to believe God for intervention. And we have had roundabout clock prayer that COVID will not take over our land because in Africa, they can't socially distance. It is impossible for them to do. But he said, we've had roundabout clock prayer that it will not spread in our community and he says I am happy to report that our numbers are doing far better than the states even though they have far more people because they believe that I don't have the luxury to depend on medicine I've got to depend on the Spirit of God now cessationists will argue that we can't build our theology on experience which I believe. Just because God gave you a check in the mail doesn't mean that's what God is doing every Sunday. That may be the way God chose to bless you. Now, Luke 1, I, I want to I wanna make sure I tickle your brain a little bit because um, Luke 1 and Matthew chapter number 1 was written after Malachi. The end of the book is Malachi, then the new book is Matthew. Matthew talks, uh, uh, gives a discourse about this Zachariah's birth. But, but it's interesting that Matthew and Malachi, there's the closing of a testament and then the beginning of a new. Interestingly enough, there was 400 years of silence between the two texts. Can you imagine if God stopped speaking over your life? not even for 400 years, but for four days. You know how lost you feel without your cell phone? You will literally go back home, turn around and go get it because you don't know how to function without it. Imagine functioning without the God of the universe saying anything to you. Imagine going to God day in and day out about your burdens and your situations and God not even say a word. They were 400 years of not hearing God speak one time. Is that Jeremiah? They were 400. Good to see you, man of God. They were 400 years of not hearing God say one thing. Can you imagine what it would be like to come to church and we're all worshiping 
sitting waiting to hear God say something and we leave with the same result. God has not said anything. And I want to kind of submit something to you that maybe silence is sometimes the entrance of a new season. Maybe silence is God preparing you and I for something that we cannot anticipate or imagine. Uh, don't, don't be alarmed that if you're in a season of silence right now and you're trying to figure out what's next, maybe God hasn't said anything because he's working and he's organizing and you won't see it because you don't hear it. Well, be careful of judging God because you don't hear him. His best work oftentimes is done in silence. Let me, let me free some of you. There are seasons where God will stop talking because silence causes us to be still. And if God can't get you still, he'll use silence to get you still. I'm preaching better than you talking. Silence will get you still. Silence will make you wonder what I need to do. Silence can either make you antsy. Silence can either make you say, I don't like this. It don't feel good. I don't like to be in silent moments. I like people talking around me. I like people saying things around me. But silence makes you get still. It refines your hearing. And there are seasons where God will let you experience silence to refine your hearing. And because sometimes silence is the entrance of a new season sometimes the greatest season is when God hasn't said nothing it is because he's preparing the next season for you and silence is a mandatory ingredient in God's economy of doing something new the Bible says this y'all it says this let the redeemed of the Lord say so he says let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord Ooh, it says, let everything that have breath, every single thing, every, everything imaginable, everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. Don't wait to a basketball game, but he said, everything that have breath, I, I need you to praise the Lord. Every single thing, every, every solitude thing, everything that exists in the earth, even if you're a child, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. And we hear that and we just say, well, you know what? I know I heard it. A praise worship leader told me that, but everything that have breath, let them praise ye the Lord. Let every Everything that have breath, let every single solitude breathing thing, let them praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath. But I stopped and said, God, I'm not as understanding as most. I, I am, I, I need a little bit more help. Why should everything praise the Lord? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. There's a great quote that's going to be on the screen. It says, many people are alive, but don't touch the miracle of being alive. Ooh, let me say that one more time. Many people are alive, but don't touch the miracle of being alive. Many people are alive, but don't touch the miracle of being alive many people are alive but don't touch the miracle of being alive the reality of it is is that if you're alive you are living a miracle if you are still breathing you are living a miracle the fact that your heart beats a hundred thousand times a day and hasn't stopped or skipped a beat means that you are a living miracle. Some of us are waiting for a miracle when the greatest miracle after salvation is the fact that you're still breathing. All right. Now, Zachariah is being called to the sanctuary and he's, he's being called to, to worship in the church and, and typically there are 24 divisions of the priesthood 24 different divisions of the priesthood so typically a priest if you were a priest in that day you, you only would have served twice in your lifetime 
maybe once. So that means if you were in that day a pastor, you still were part of the pastorhood, but you only worked once a year because you had 24 divisions, which is a whole interesting conversation about how church is supposed to be structured. In my opinion, I don't think the Western world has structured church properly. Um, I think there's there's a need of plurality in the church, not singularity, but that's a whole nother discussion. But they, 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 they would only serve once a year. So, so this actually was how they would choose who's going to serve. What they would do is they would, they would, they would cast lots, kind of like um, playing rolling dice. And if the dice landed on you, that means it was your time to serve. And, and, and isn't it interesting that they were, they, were, they were rolling the dice on whose turn it is to serve, and, and all of a sudden the dice landed on Zechariah. That, that didn't just happen. God sovereignly did that. God, God doesn't, there's no such thing as coincidence in scripture. There's, there's, there's what you call divine appointment. God sovereignly arranged that even though it wasn't Zachariah's time, it was his turn. That, that God has a way of making sure that if we're going to gamble, it's going to land on you. That if God wants you to be in a certain place, he will arrange everything around you to make sure your name is called. He, he's not playing any games with you. Whatever God wants to get done in your life, whatever God has to move in your life to get you to the place that he needs to get you to, he will move it, y'all. I'm telling you, if that house is yours, God will make sure the person that's in it has to get out of it, gets a job to move, because God will move things around to ensure that you're in the place that he needs to speak to you. Because if Zachariah wasn't in the temple, he may have not got the message that he's about to have a son. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. Zachariah is a priest. He's getting to serve. And, and as he's before the presence of the Lord, putting incense out, incense was symbolic of worship and prayer. Incense was symbolic of worship and prayer. Here's, here's what happens. God has been silent, but when Zachariah starts offering up worship and prayer, it gets God to get off his throne and say something. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. He, he didn't have to go to a bishop. He didn't have to sow a seed. He didn't have to go on the 1-800 hotline and buy some water from Jerusalem. He didn't have to go and tag somebody who's more anointed than him. Zachariah got in the presence of God, and when he began to worship and pray to God as the people were outside, Zachariah began to, now, now, this is what the priest would do. The people would gather outside, and the priest would go in on their own, and so they would sprinkle myrrh on their body and frankincense because they were getting themselves prepared to speak to God because you don't go speak to God any type of way. You're going to speak to a king, so you want to make sure you romance that king in a way that lets him know that I'm coming to you because I know you're God. I'm not just coming to you haphazardly. I know I can come to you as I am, but I want you to know I prepared for you. I didn't just throw this thing together. I was waiting on you. I, I want to make sure that the environment is set so that when you and I meet, you can impregnate me with something greater than myself. I, I want you to know that I prepared. I've set some time. I, there's one thing when you say, I have made up in my mind that this is for you. I plan. I put roses on. I put the fireplace on. I put the smell on everything. I put the music right. Why? Because I was prepared for you. I didn't just believe that you were going to show up. I wanted to make sure that when you showed up, we had the best of time. And maybe God has been silent because your prayer room doesn't look like you're prepared as a bed chamber. Maybe it doesn't look like something you're expecting God to do. And Zachariah wasn't expecting God to do anything. But when you start worshiping God even when he's silent God will start speaking even when you feel like God is not moving and doing the miraculous like you like if you start worshiping God he will do it miracles y'all are not for the believer they're for the unbeliever you never really, maybe I might be wrong, but my reading of scripture, I don't see God doing miracles because people worshiped and asked him to. He seems to just do miracles because he can. To get people to be aware. Now, here's the thing. This is very important. Miracles. So here, here's the thing about miracles. This is, this is important. Let me find it on my notes. 
Miracles don't make you follow Jesus. They just make you acknowledge him. Y'all got that online? Miracles don't make you follow him. They just make you acknowledge him. How many of you experienced a miracle? It might have made you serve him for a day, but it didn't make you serve him forever. How many people we know that had a miracle and stopped following God like they should? Because miracles don't make, that's why Jesus says, it is a perverse generation that looks for a sign. Signs don't make you believe God more. Just because mama God keeps granddad alive or mama alive doesn't mean you're going to serve him better. You will acknowledge him, but it will not transform your life to follow him. So God understands that miracles are just there not to make you follow Jesus, but to acknowledge Jesus. Ooh. So here it is. But the text tells us this. Elizabeth was able to receive, but not able to produce. She was old. She was able to receive from her husband, but not able to produce. That's so hard. That some of you can receive, but you can't produce. Which means you got notes full of sermons that haven't manifested in your life. You could recite every verse and you can tell about the goodness of God, but you ain't seeing it in your life. There are some of us that are receiving God's spirit, but we're not producing anything and we're not seeing manifestation happen in our life. And that happens to some because we're barren, which means that we can receive seed, but we can't do anything with the seed that we receive. It's almost as if it's wasted and there's nothing worse than knowing that you've been receiving and not being able to produce. It is the most frustrating thing in life to go through life knowing that you're smarter than your bank account. You're wiser than your lifestyle. You have more ability than what you're able to show for. And that's where Elizabeth was. She was problematic. She had an issue. But here's the thing for you married couples. The text is very clear. It says that Zachariah married Elizabeth and Elizabeth had a problem. The question that I'd like to pose to you who are married and those of you who aspire to be married, can you marry a problem? Because a lot of us want to marry an answer. But what happens when you marry a problem that they cannot change or fix within themselves? Do you abandon that which is a problem and look for someone else that is an answer? Because the reality is, is that the issue was not with Zachariah. The issue was with Elizabeth. And here's the reality. Can you imagine being her? I'm sure there were other women in that day that would go up to Zachariah and say, I, I can give you a child. God knows she can I'm, I'm sure there were. Don't look at don't look at other women like that because some of you are like that. Zachariah was was thinking within himself. I, I'm just gonna ride it out. That's just what it's gonna be. And 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 she she going to baby showers and and Zachariah having to encourage her and say, "Babe, it's okay. You're doing the best you can." Women talking about, man, when you gonna have a child? Y'all not doing it? Cause, Cause you ain't had a child in a while. What's, what's going on? Is, are you the problem or is he the problem? And Zachariah gotta cover his wife and say, no, I'm the problem, she's not the problem. She's good, it's just me, it ain't her. And she's gotta feel embarrassed and inferior and she's gotta feel like, I don't know when my time is gonna come, but I gotta learn how to celebrate others even when it's not my time. Because sometimes how God blesses me is how I bless others when I want it to be my time but it's not my turn and 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 we we are we are we are we are seeing something happen here two things that are happening Zachariah you can't have a child because of age and ability some of you feel like you can't do anything because of your age I'm too old I'm not old enough, or my ability. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't have the skill level or the skill set to do that. And, and God, no, notice what happened to Zachariah. Something happened that was really critical. We'll talk about it next week. 
is that God stopped him from being able to speak because he doubted and wanted proof. The issue wasn't the doubt. The issue was he wanted proof that God miracle sometimes uses your inability so that you will know that only God could do it. His age and his ability were the two things that were standing against him. Now I need to give you this because I think this is important. God uses an angel God uses an angel to get the message to Zechariah. Now, I know some of you want to worship angels, but angels are not meant to be worshipped. They're just messengers. They're just messengers. I know, I know Tito died, and you want Tito to be an angel and look over you. I don't want Tito looking over me. I'd rather the Holy Spirit look over me. I know Shaniqua died, and you're like, Shaniqua got her wings now. She about to look over me from heaven, if she made it. I know bro man died from the block, and now he's got his wings. And we're going to pour a drink for him. And he's going to look down on us. He's going to rest in power. But the reality of the matter is this. Angels don't have any authority outside of the authority that they've been sent. Angels are just the FedEx, UPS, DHL of heaven. They deliver what God wants them to deliver. And sometimes angels get held up on delivering your package. And sometimes God had already answered it. It just never got to your doorstep. It just got just held up like the archangel had to be sent in to war with some. Sometimes God has sent your request but, but here's the thing that was interesting. The angel comes to him and says this. Um, your prayer has been heard. It just wasn't answered. So here's a question I need to ask you. When you pray, do you want God to answer you or hear you? Because that matters. Because some of us want to be heard more than we want to answer. You ever have an argument with somebody and you're like, I really don't want a resolution, I just want you to hear me. The reality is that God heard him. He just didn't respond in the time that he wanted. And I don't know why God makes us wait, but I do know this, this is a very interesting thing, I said this before, is that this, there are three ways of God answering prayers. If your request is, and you might need to write this down, I don't know what happened to the screen, but if your request is wrong, God says no. If your request is wrong, God says no. If your timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says grow. It, let me say it one more time. If your request is wrong, God says no. If your timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says grow. But if the request is right, timing is right, and if you are right, God says go. So Zachariah has been praying, and I'm bringing this boat home. Zachariah has been praying, and uh, God sends an angel. God didn't even, do you ever read the Bible and wonder, why didn't God get up and go to him himself? God sends a messenger. God's like, listen. I got your answer. But when you have this child, I want you to know a few things. Number one, I want you to name this child what I asked you to name. Wait a minute, how you gonna give me a child and then tell me what to name? 
No, God says this very importantly. Sometimes God answers your prayers because your prayers are for his purpose. So the bait, oh, this is so good. Oh my God. So the baby answers your prayer and you get to benefit from the baby but the baby doesn't belong to you C can I say it in a better way so God will answer your prayer and the prayer will benefit you but the prayer wasn't even about you I've been praying, God, I need a son. I, I need I need John. I need John. I, I need John. I need I need a son. And and God's like, well, I, I actually need John to be Jesus' cousin. Wait a minute, you missed it. God, I need a son. And God's like, well, yeah, I know what you need, but really I need you to have a son so that he can introduce Jesus. God, I need a car. Yeah, I'm going to give you a car, but the car's not really for you. It's for you to benefit other people and to tell them about me and to pick up others who don't have a ride. God, I need a promotion. Yeah, I don't really need to give you a promotion, but I need you to have more money because your mama's getting older and I need you to be in position to help her. No, Y'all just still missed it. God, I, I, need, I, need, I need you to open up this door for me. And God is simply saying, no, the door isn't about you. The door is about me. And I'm going to use this door to open up for you, but it's really not for you. It's for you to steward. It's for you to utilize. God, I, I want to I wanna go here. No, I'm going to give you a gift that touches the world but it's not about you it's about the people you touch I'm going to give you a business that's going to benefit you but it's not about you because I need a business that's going to represent me in the earth the proper way I, I'm going to give you a tax business and you're going to use this business, not for you but it's going to glorify me you're not going to rip people off you're not going to tell them they got 18 kids and then they get audited by the IRS you're going to do it God's way and you're going to be blessed God's way and you're going to be multiplied God's way. It really ain't about you, but I'm going to honor you. I'm going to let you lease what I'm giving you. But don't get it twisted. Just because I answered it, it doesn't mean it's for you. I'm just doing it through you. It's not always for you. I'm just doing it Yeah, God, I want, I want a bigger church. I want a bigger space. And God says, I'm, I, I actually don't need you to have a bigger church, but if I give you a bigger church, I really want it to be used for the community. I really want it to be a community center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to honor your word and honor your prayer, but it's really not for you. I'm using you so I can get things through you to get where I want to get to. And if you get it twisted and think it's for you, you will miss the reality that it was never about you. It was about my purpose. And sometimes I will answer your prayers, not because of your prayers, but because of my purpose. And God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. And God will use your prayers for his purpose. I don't know about you, but you've been dreaming some things and you keep thinking the dream is about you. It has nothing to do with you. It has the reality to do with that God wants to use you so that he can get through you what he was trying to get to you. It's, it's not for you, even though it goes through you. It's not for you, even though it goes through you. 
Y'all ain't hear me. It's not for you, even though it goes through you, that God is positioning you not for you, but wants to position you so he can go through you. And I want to know what you've been praying about. I want to know what you've been asking God for. I want to know what you've been believing God for. It's not about you. It's about God using you to get a message to everybody that is around you. So what's the message? Ooh, I so feel this. I've been praying. I've been asking. And why has God, you know, I ask God all the time. I do, I ask God all the time. I ask God all the time. What are you saying to us that you're doing through us? I, I was just, I was a little challenged this week. I, I was uh, thinking of places to go for a hiatus and uh, I realized that half the world is locked up. And I started thinking to myself, well, I guess there's nowhere really to go. But then I started to uh, call Brother Nate Jean Jock. And I said, hey man, what? I'm thinking about going somewhere. He said, if I were you, I'd stay home. Cause, Cause I know a lot of people who went X, Y, Z. Shut up Siri, I'm preaching. And I know a lot of people who, um, who went to um, X, Y, Z and then got COVID. And I said, oh man, God. And I talked to my other friend, Joel Dixon, who's not here this morning. I don't know why he's not here, but he should be. I'll text him and tell him he should be in church. He's single, he has no, no kids, he, he has no responsibility, he should be in church. He doesn't work on the weekend, so I'm not sure why he's not here. But anyway, I asked him a question. I said, so, Kevin Hart, are you here? I don't know if Kevin Hart is here. Kevin Hart, he's not here. Okay, Kevin Hart, he's not here, all right. He's a guy that looked just like Kevin Hart. We work out together. And I said to him, I said, Joel, I'm thinking about going out the country. What you think? He said, oh, man, do you want to get stuck outside the country and not be able to come back in? And your wife and your wife and you be stuck outside and your kids be asking for you for Christmas and you can't come back in? And I said, man, my God. I said, that's quite a bit. I said, no, I don't want that to happen. Then I started scrolling on social media and I saw, I saw some members that started with me that were very poor when they started with me. Now they're started from the bottom, now they're here. And um, I saw them in Mexico, and then I saw another member that was very broke. Um, he went to Maldives, and now he's in Los Cabos, and he's on a boat, just living his best life. And I sat there and I thought about it. Then I saw another guy, uh, he used to uh, be broke too. Uh, now he's making a little bit of money. He tells everybody he was making money on his social media stuff. He tells, shut up, I'm preaching. And so, Siri, and so all of a sudden, I, I started thinking, I started thinking to myself, you know, why did you name your church kingdom? I, this is something I named for a while. Then I had a, this African guy tell me, January of last year, this African guy came to me. We were having a prayer service at our building. And he leans over to me and says, man of God? I said, yes. God's going to position this church for political greatness. I said, okay. He said, you're going to see God's going to raise up politicians in your church. And I said, amen. Praise God. So then I started asking God, what are you doing that I see a lot of people prospering within the context of, stop talking. Gosh, what's going on with you? Is the android spirit keeping on you? Don't, 
she's trying to bind the android spirit in the room. That's why she keeps talking. It's okay. We got this. The Holy Ghost is here. So what I feel as an impression is that God is utilizing a lot of people within this church. Is, and when I say success, I don't want you to define success as I'm living in a six-bedroom house because that's not success. All right? I have nice jewelry. That's not success. I have a nice ring. That's not success. But I believe God is using people as stories. They are getting blessed by the water running through their hose because that's just natural. When you're a conduit of water, you're going to get wet. But the water was never designed to, for them to talk about them getting wet. It was designed to tell the story behind the flow of the water. Now, some of you who are winning, now, some of you need to be careful because some of you who are winning, you're turning the water into your source. And it, it is great to celebrate getting wet, but that is not the reality of why God let it flow through you. When, when one of our, well, we only have one. So I believe God is raising up political leaders in the church, not for us, but using them, using them to transform and introduce. God is using Elizabeth's womb, not for Elizabeth, but because her womb is going to introduce John to Jesus and John's going to introduce Jesus to the world. So if you're dreaming right in this moment, maybe your dream is, is not for you even though it's going through you. And if you stop dreaming, why? Like God is, God is raising up people so that even little brown girls can know they have the capacity to do it. Listen, even after 400 years of bondage, God is raising up all types of people to showcase, I can use you if you give me your womb. Whew. Even if you're ashamed of what your womb used to produce or did not produce, I can still use it. I've seen couples struggling to have a baby and then they have children. Why? So their belly could be a witness to you that God won't let you cry unjustly. Now, 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 I know that sounds good because some of you will say, oh, amen. Listen, this, you and I have to resolve this. And I'm done. Pastor Jerry's coming to receive communion. You and I have to resolve this. There will be some answers God will not answer on this side. He will not answer on this side. Sean King, very popular activist, said this week, very large following, says, I prayed for babies not to die of COVID and they died, and I don't understand how prayer works anymore. Because here's the thing, when you, have a, when you have a theology that prayer is the means to control God, when it doesn't work, it hurts. Maybe prayer is a means to help God help us deal with the things that life will give that our education can explain.
whatever promise you hold, y'all, whether it is small or big, it's, gone. it's, it's not for you even though it goes through you. So I want to pray. Father, I don't, I don't, there was so much to be said, so many things to take away, but God, I pray that you would help us know you, love you, serve you, honor you all the days of our lives. Thank you for the word of God. It is life-changing to our soul. Help my brother and sister to dream those God dreams. Help them to remember that it may go through them but it's not for them, even though they get to benefit from it. So God, help us to see the message in the miracle. Help us to see the message. Even though we live in a world that seems to argue God isn't present, you're showing us each and every day in our lives through small and large things that you are with us. Help us not to lose sight of that. So, Father, I pray right now for my brother and sister who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins. If you are here and you're saying, I am watching online or I'm in the sanctuary and I don't know Jesus. Listen, very simply, all I'm asking you to do in this moment is to take that, that cell phone out and text this word. It's important. We follow up with you. We actually call you. Text is be on, on the screens. Text the word Jesus to 407-449-8884. And you might say, well, why do I need to text it? Is that it? No, we want to follow up with you specifically. I have actually called our salvations from April. Our staff has called them. We want to connect and commit to you that faith is not something that just happens because you make a decision. Sanctification is a process. And in this moment, if you feel convicted by the Holy Spirit and you're saying, I, I don't, I've walked away from God. Somebody sent me this, somebody shared this. I want you to agree with me in faith. Jesus died not just for other sinners. He died for you who are a sinner and me. And our righteousness, even if we tried our best to live for God, we will fail every time. But God in his goodness and mercy sends the helper of the Holy Spirit and then puts us in communities of faith to help us grow spiritually. So in this moment, I just want you to pray in your own words, just asking God to forgive you of your sins. Forgiveness of sins is what we need. To repent is a simple word. Jesus told it, those who want to be saved to repent and sin no more. But repentance begins with an acknowledgement that I need you as the Lord of my life. If you don't reign over my life, I have no life. So God, help me to live for you all the days of my life and help me to serve you. Help me to serve you. Bring me into a community of faith that will help me learn the principles of God and the words of God. Now in this moment, we're about to take communion. I know it's a little longer than normal, but this first Sunday, I want you to remember that the blood in the body of Jesus has been shed for us for this reason that there's nothing impossible to them that believe God bless you